Hi, welcome back. So in this video, we are going to discuss Wilcoxon rank sum test for paired differences. So two samples should be paired in order to decrease data variability. And again, we already discussed it quite explicitly during the previous lecture. When you analyze people of the same characteristics, uh, like gender, age, and stuff, you decrease data variability significantly. So that's why you have more freedom when it comes to testing the research hypothesis. There are two assumptions which have to be fulfilled in order to conduct this test. So two samples should be random and paired, and two probability distributions from which the samples are drawn should be continuous. Keeping this in mind, let us analyze the following problem. So imagine that you are responsible for marketing research of the new hair product. Eight respondents assess the state of their hair before and after the treatment. You have to investigate whether self-assessed state of hair before and after the treatment are different. And we assume that the value of alpha is 0.05. So for you at this point, it should be very easy to detect that we perform two-tailed test. Again, we are only interested in whether self-assessed state of the hair is different before and after the treatment. I don't know, maybe it makes your hair worse, but even in this case, we successfully managed to reject the null hypothesis. So, the null hypothesis states that the probability distributions corresponding to the self-reported state of hair before and after the treatment are identical, and the alternative hypothesis states that the probability distributions corresponding to the self-reported state of hair before and after the treatment are different. So when it comes to computing test statistics, it's actually easier to explain it step by step. So the first step for you is to calculate the difference in the value of variable of interest prior to the treatment and after the treatment. So in this case, we are actually not interested which one will be bigger. So that's why we just calculate the difference. Uh, again, I suggest that it would be more useful to subtract uh, self-reported state of the hair expressed as numerical variable uh, prior to treatment from self-reported state of the hair expressed as numerical variable after the treatment. So we can see that there is only one person which, uh, who thought that um, treatment was actually harmful. So there is the single negative difference. And yeah, the rest of differences are positive. Then you have to calculate the absolute value of the difference. And you have to rank those absolute values. Finally, you have to calculate sum of positive ranks and sum of negative ranks. So we have only one negative difference, and we can actually figure out that it is the smallest one. So sum of negative ranks is 1, and sum of positive ranks is the sum of remaining ranks, which is 35. The next step is calculating test statistic. So for two-tailed test, it is a smaller sum of two ranks. So you compare this value and this value, and you pick the smaller one. So in our case, sum of negative ranks is smaller. So test statistic is 1. Then you have to go for a special table in order to figure out critical value of T0 in the Wilcoxon pair differences signed rank test. So in our case, we have eight observations. We perform two tailed test. We assume that alpha is equal to 0 0.025. So our critical value is four.
And now, when we decide between the null and the alternative hypothesis, you have to keep in mind that it can be only rejected if test statistic is lower than or equal to T0, which we can extract from the table. So in our case, uh, T0 is equal to 4 and T is equal to 1, which means that test statistic is indeed smaller than the critical value. And this implies that we can reject zero hypothesis in favor for the alternative hypothesis. So now let us consider another problem. And here we are going to perform left-tailed test. So the research problem is identical as discussed before. But now we have to investigate whether the treatment is effective. So to be more specific, we are going to verify whether self-assessed state of hair uh, before the treatment is worse than self-assessed state of hair after the treatment. So when it comes to the relevant hypothesis, uh, the null hypothesis states that the probability distributions corresponding to the self-reported state of hair before and after the treatment are identical. And the alternative hypothesis states that the probability distribution corresponding to the self-reported state of hair before the treatment lies below or to the left of the probability distribution for the self-assessed state of hair after the treatment. Here, please keep in mind that when we computed this table, we subtracted values prior from values after. So, in fact, we hypothesize that after the treatment assessment is higher, there should be many positive ranks and not that much of negative ranks. So this is what justifies the usage of the left-tailed test. So because of this, our test statistic is still equal to 1. So we perform our test based on the negative rank. And again, if it's relatively small, it means that there are not that many of those negative values. For us, for two-tailed test, um, the value was lower, but because we assume uh, that the value of alpha is equal to 0.05 for one tailed test, so here we are. So for us, the critical value is equal to 6, and we will be able to reject the null hypothesis if test statistics is below 6 or equal to 6. In our case, it is equal to 1. That's why uh, we should reject the null hypothesis in favor for the alternative hypothesis. This is how it works. So I want you to pay attention to the way you design this table. So when it comes to non-parametric tests, it's really, really important to keep in mind what exactly you want to investigate. So in our case, when I computed differences, as I told you, I subtracted this value from this value. Consequently, if you hypothesize the treatment is effective, it indeed improves self-reported state of hair, there should be many positive differences and not that much of negative ranks. So... This is what you have to keep in mind when interpreting the results of your test, your test statistic, how exactly you compute those differences. So that was it when it comes to this test. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.